we got to talk about like real problems though. Real problems is um, turns out Valve has been experimenting with animals, and I think. This is a <laughs> And welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Ben Stone here at LGC Actual Switch in the Bits, doing the Nightmare Fuel in our Linux-powered studio. Joining me, just waking up, one Jordan's fine, all the way in Toronto, where it's nice and warm. It's scary, you know, it's like 19 degrees. They're going to melt. <laughs> and, of course, staying up late past his bedtime, one Pedro Mateus on the Isles Hello. of Britannia. Doing the things with you, Shatrum Dynamic, joining us live, helping us form Cocaine Voltron, which apparently is still available. No. I know. For now. For now. <laughs> for, for, I mean, now that we've set this on Twitch, you know. We did, we did. We absolutely discovered some things in the pre pre super shows. And if you're a patron, go back and listen to that. But we found that um, YOLO is not a TLD. No. No. Which is unfortunate because <laughs> uh, we were deprived of yeet.yolo or morb. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Uh, Apparently, Morbid 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 was taken. Yeah. <laughs> Man, uh, we should have been Mor- on that. Mor- Morbid so. Timmy was available though. If you wanted that. <laughs> oh shit! What? What? What if we can go deeper? Can we do like Morgan Freeman Morgan time? <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, there's tr- precedent already for Captain Tracy Morgan Freeman. So okay, I'll allow it. <laughs> I guess that could be a thing. Uh, what do we got going on? Uh, myself? What, what, what about you, Jordan? You've been on call, so Jordan's got like a fair warning. He's like, I might have to smoke bomb. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, you, you you brought up something. Uh, we were talking about the boys in the pre-pre-super shows, and watching the first three episodes of that new season, I know too many of those landmarks. I can tell you where a bunch of that shit was shot. <laughs> oh, they shoot that in the Toronto land. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they, they do. Like, the, the bit at the theme park, like, that's Wonderland. I used to go there as a kid. It's it's weird watching, just, just seeing all the, the Toronto landmarks it's cleverly hidden in the background, but you can still see shit. Like, oh, yeah, I know oh, where that man. is. The boys. I Three chairs, I would give it four, but they, did, they only released three episodes. I would have given it four. It's just giving yeah. me all, so I don't have to start watching. It's, 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 it's giving you uh, tingly feelings in your urethra? Yeah, one could say <laughs> that. Uh, I, I explode with delight. Pedro oh. Mateus, uh, the man who once bought three laptops in one week. How <laughs> yes. are you doing? To be fair, that was all a single purchase. <laughs> Very much in that vein, I I bought another laptop. Here's the uh, the keyboard. The rest you of monster. It what is it? It's exploded over there on oh. the table. <laughs> Just because I'm waiting for the motherboard, I finally found a motherboard for the Asus Triple E PC ten fifteen PN, which is the one with the Pine Trail Dual Core Atom and the NVIDIA Ion GPU, which is supposedly the most powerful ten inch laptop. So I have all the necessary, well, I have bought all the necessary bits to put one together. They and just haven't all arrived yet. Mm. So so once you have a fully armed and operational netbook, what, what are you planning on doing with it? I intend to compare it. Discord. Yes, uh, that, 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 that is Geekbench. a given. But yeah, uh, run Geekbench and run... Um, the old Unigens, so I can compare uh, the 1015 PM to the Toshiba NB 550D, which was the most powerful AMD netbook at the time. All right. So, yeah. So you're going to make them kiss? <laughs> Discord pictures, yeah. <laughs> we can do Discord pictures, yeah. No can. Make them kiss. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so what have I been doing? Uh, a couple of things. Had a great time last night. If you Get a chance to do it. I always say, come hop in and race with us. We do track mania because we're a bunch of filthy casuals, like flying off tracks and pretending we have no idea what we're doing. It's kind of interesting, but it's always a good time. 14 new tracks each and every week for us to explore on our nice little private server. Ah, I didn't win. Wait, hang on. Did I win anything? I won <laughs> once. So I'm, I'm improving. I'm improving. But, you know. It was nice, Pedro, because uh, when we get done with that, we open the server up to the public on Friday nights, and we race around. I wrecked one of your scores. Quite possibly, yes. <laughs> I haven't played um, to that level uh, track media in a while. <laughs> we're, we're trying to stay on the track, man. What are you doing? Oh, man, we, 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 we got some people jonesing in Discord, though. 
Yeah, yeah no, I apparently mean, the server's down, Mania. so people are like, ah, come on. I, I, need, I need my headband. Daddy, please. Hey, I just got to make sure the attention is focused to the appropriate thing. You can't be playing trick baby when we're doing a live show. And also, it's also the server for Jitsi, so come on. It's what? not terribly powerful. What? what? Aren't you taking advantage of those new digital ocean cheap droplets? Well, I combined it into one. Ah. Yep. So another thing I picked up, uh, playing around with, um, man, months and months ago, I found a good deal on a uh, condenser microphone because I do interface in Linux and always want a couple of mics to swap in and out and play around with. And it was like an SE Electronics S2000, whatever. It's all right. It's great. And But I, I was really happy about the shock mount that it came with. I'm like, oh, that's got an integrated filter and I don't have all those. Shit but there's no chance of using a condenser mic in here. Just too many PC fans. It's not going to happen no matter what you do. But another thing I always wanted to get hold to was a ribbon microphone. And I have access to ribbon microphones, but the ones I have access to are like very nice used car price ones. And they're also very sensitive. So like it's ribbon mic. You got to be, can't hang them upside down. You got to cover them and put them up. I found this on reverb, which is the XR one. No, it's not. God damn it. Uh, X one art. Is that not the dumbest thing in the world? X one R. Yeah. Instead of XR one. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I got this for a great use deal on Reverb. I picked it up for Interfacing Linux. I'm just playing with it right now. I'm like, yay, it's a microphone. I don't give a shit about them. But yeah, that that was pretty much it. Racing and truck mania, having a good time. I plugged in a microphone. That was my week, man. <laughs> can't can't beat that. It's I mean, I mean, party you, time. you you could try. You could plug a microphone into the horse. No, you I'll, can't, man. It's not yes, allowed. You, you can. You're just not gonna like the sound that comes out of the other end. It's the steam. Linux. <laughs> and thank uh, you, Basil. For, you know, yeah. Thank you, Basil. Uh, for uh, I guess this is a change from the past several months. Uh, that the first bit of the news is not about the deck, which is impressive, I suppose. What is Although that a it challenge? is. <laughs> Tangentially related to the deck. Yeah, a bit. deck adjacent, absolutely. Uh, but it is the Steam Hardware Survey for May 2022. Uh, so we saw Linux um, get a little bit of a uh, not moving around very much. It was a slight increase, not not a whole lot. Yeah, well, slight not decrease. De- decrease. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not point. Uh, not two percent down. And uh, Arch which was the bit that you probably saw on Twitter, was that Arch Linux 64-bit has now overtaken uh, Ubuntu 20.04 LTS 64-bit, which, you know, fair enough. Uh, it is. It might be temporary because 22.04 is out now, and uh, 20.04 it will be going out of um, support for most distros because the three yeah. years are up until, uh, I think it's this, uh, near the when... If you, look, if you look at the uh, oh, if you comes out? <laughs> if you look at the usage numbers, yeah, you can you can see that twenty e o four is going down and uh, twenty two o four is crawling up. So yes. yeah, it's probably was, it's, the, it's, the highest increase was actually Jordan twenty two o four. You do realize that doesn't make as enticing a headline. No, it doesn't. It's okay, re- report, reporting plain facts. I know it's it's boring. Oh, uh, <laughs> but but yeah, that that Arch Linux that that in quotes that's is that Steam OS or is that just like all Arch Linux? Are they? I don't know. No, that that's Arch Linux. Uh, Manjaro gets separated, and if you look at it, it also shows you the um, Steam Deck Hollow. I think. What this? Yeah, Hol- okay, Steam OS Hollow. There you All right, I see. Well, Which that's, you, that's, that's it actually news. shows up on the list now. <laughs> hey, hey. But this again, this is reported from hardware service, so I guess this is people dropping into desktop mode or... Nope, uh, Valve well, fixed that a yeah. while back. Oh. Uh, they now present the survey, even if you're using just game mode. Valve time, yeah. baby. Yeah, yeah. fancy. <laughs> fancy schmancy. So, uh, speaking of Valve time... Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, there had to be something, uh, because, you know, they released the deck, everything was going swimmingly, except the dock. Where's the dock? Everyone's asking about the dock. Where's the dock? Well, it's delayed. That's where it is. Uh, it is, they say, that because of everything that's going on, and there's a lot of stuff getting closed because the pandemic hasn't really gone anywhere, um, it, it's delayed. 
it it's only the dock. They say that supposedly it doesn't affect um, the actual Steam Deck itself. And for people who actually want a dock uh, for the deck, most of them already have a regular Type C one. It just doesn't have the slot. Fucking <laughs> photo. The, they added a blur effect on the end. I mean, come on. Yeah, you know, uh, you know that USB C connector like is obscene. That's the filter. <laughs> You got, you got to censor that so that the people don't get offended by your I, loose type C connectors. I guess. I don't know, man. Cause you know, people don't really seem to be terribly wound up about the dock. This news came out earlier this week and people were like, okay. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's a nice <laughs> to have, they, 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 they say they're, they're working on improving compatibility with other type C docks. So those of you who want one will be staring at your clock going deck dock. Deck dock you gotta be dock. a little bit grateful about it though. Cause I mean, let's think about it. And like, if this was Sony or Nintendo, especially like back in the day, <laughs> You wouldn't have had a way to charge your deck. Oh, no, yeah. Well, the entire deck would have been delayed because it needs to ship with the dock, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so just Sony. We can take Nintendo out of that equation. Yeah. Um, but, hey, man. They, <laughs> no, what, it's what Apple. You don't even get anything. You just get the cable. Yeah, sort it out. Trust me. Listen, if you've owned <laughs> Apple products before you got them, don't worry about it. No, we made sure not, of that. Not, not, not anymore because, you know, those, nope. they keep changing those Pepsi. chargers. So here's the thing about this, though. Um they say it's delayed because of a uh, like chip shortage and it's a different manufacturer. So nothing to worry about. This isn't going to impact your future deck dates, which are being impacted for a completely other reason, but they are still going out. My assumption is that they're probably going to bundle this with half-life three. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. That's really going to help push out bundle. the docks. Yeah. Because here's, you gotta hear me out. You don't need to buy a steam deck to buy this, but you have to buy this to get Half-Life 3, then what are you going to do with this dock? Then you're going to want a dock. I can just plug it into my phone. Shut up. USB, USB. <laughs> you, you, can, you can censor it all you want, but I can still see what kind of connector it is, Valve. Yeah, it, it, it is just a Type-C connector, and yes, you could use that dock for literally anything that can do DisplayPort or HDMI over Type-C, or Ethernet for that matter. You can use that for everything else too. But will it work with my Nintendo <laughs> Switch? That's the real question. Okay, so even- we we got to talk about like real problems though. Real problems is um, turns out Valve has been experimenting with animals, and I think this is a <laughs> <laughs> um, fair warning. Fair warning on high settings: the Steam Deck fan can be used as canine repellent because they decided <laughs> to use Doge's as an example of uh, their new smart fan speed <laughs> management <right>. versus <laughs> Yolo I mean, mode. it's a good video. It is a good video for the people who didn't want to read because they have like the mighty wall of text that describes everything that they've been doing lately. As, and then keep up good video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you Come put the pupper on now. the video. <laughs> I mean, Pedro, what is this? A roundup of everything yeah. that's been in the betas and pretty much everything we've been talking about, uh, about the deck uh, over the past couple of months, like the new updates, the new releases, everything like the, the big beta merge uh, happened before the show last week. And we actually talked about it. This just, it, it's a roundup of everything that they've done very high level. You don't even get a lot of details. Just, okay. We've introduced the lock screen. There's new keyboard layouts. You get achievements that are now like in a deck native uh, format. It, yeah. Yeah. Basically, that stuff. But what, but what here's happens Here's the question when you that I have, though. From origin? Here's the question. What's this at the bottom? What's this mean? What are you trying to tell me, Lassie? Arbitrary uh, those, job, the, the Binding of the, Isaac, Elden Ring, Hades, and Witcher Wild Hunt. We hope the breadth of games in this list is as exciting. Yes. Is, so if, if, you, if you do control F on that asterisk, you'll <laughs> go up to that line where it says the top 10 titles of last month. And then it just yes. explains what those titles are. Uh, yeah, they uh, actually list out the titles, which, you know, yeah, that seems about right. A- Aperture Desk one. Job is the one that they put front and center whenever but, uh, you start uh, the let's deck. Let's see. Let's see how we can break this down. <laughs> the free one, Aperture Desk Job, uh, yeah. the cheap one, Binding of Isaacs, because you already have a copy of that. Let's face it. Probably, Elden Ring, yeah. put the popular one. Hades, the hipster one. People love that. Nominsky. All right. I, now we're getting into the weeds. Rogue Legacy 2, Slay the Spire, Story Evil, Slay the Vampire Spire, Survivors. <laughs> the Witcher. People are going to put Witcher 3 on it because, like, this thing could run Witcher 3. That mm, could yeah. run it better than the Switch. Right. So. Yeah. I think all of that makes sense, huh? Right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I'm surprised. Um, I was surprised to see Slay the Spire there because uh, I very much like that game and I don't see 
a lot of, about it, but apparently I, I'm glad I'm it's good in the majority on that one. <laughs> Jordan, I got to ask you a very serious question. What? Um, is it a good idea to have your Steam library from Linux on a Windows partition? Uh, generally, generally no, but you know, Valve's. Not I mean, I bought a you. new hard drive and I installed it, and I was already familiar with you know Fat Thirty Two, yeah, yeah. so I just formatted <laughs> it for Fat Thirty Two under Linux because hey, why not? Uh, right? Yeah, no, it's 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 a fantastic idea. Although maybe you would uh, you'd be having a bit of a sad time on the Steam Deck client. There's a new update uh, for the Steam client like period uh that comes with the one linux update here uh so if a file system doesn't support uh pre-allocation so basically uh fat32 or exfat uh installation will uh not fail which is important if you're trying to install uh you know your games on a exfat sd card why you would want that on your steam deck and not f2fs or ext4 i can't say i guess i guess yeah the the real excuse here is the uh the dual booting if you're going yes. from windows to linux on your steam deck because you really got to play destiny 2 you need a really really terribly performant file system yeah, not just so. on your deck but just in your computer in general if you are yep. a filthy dual booting heathen welcome we have a lot of you in the chat it's fine uh the Stop uh <laughs> The yeah, it is because th there's one of the things that you see a lot when people are just trying Linux, like, oh, can I have like my games installed from the Windows partition and just load from there? And the answer is, is it formatted in NTFS? No, because the NTFS drivers are shit. Uh, uh, and if it that one's is, Microsoft's fault though. Yes, 100%. <laughs> and if it is um, in Fat32, you're probably not hosting your games on Fat32 because uh, you probably have that one game file that is bigger than uh, 3.21 something gigabytes, so you, you can't do that. EXFAT. You know that that's you a could use EXFAT, which wasn't working on Steam if you had a you know a separate partition or a separate drive formatted as EXFAT, but that works now, so I guess you can now. Well, I think the moral of the story is, um, yeah, just run your Windows uh, from a VM inside on the Steam Deck. Live a little. Have some fun. No, t turn you can. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, a better experience than installing it natively. <laughs> and then launch Windows subsystems for Linux from there and see if you can get Steam up and running. No, run Wine to install Sigwin so oh, that you can yes. have, yeah. There yeah, layers. You just, you just gotta go Turtles all the way down, man. Um, so, but Proton. New, yeah, new version of Proton out. Almost, not quite. This is the release candidate, 7.0.3. Nothing too crazy here. We're seeing some of the Roundup uh, stuff from the uh, beta, the uh, experimental client as well, I should say. Um, Look at all those games. Yeah, uh, but right now but they're looking... I've never heard of. Wait, I know uh, MechWarrior. MechWarrior. <laughs> what, what about Sky, Succubus really? X Saint? I, I don't know what that is, but it sounds like a hentai. Uh, but yeah, they. Uh, this is the RC. Uh, you got to opt into it uh, from the Proton uh, 7.0 beta. Uh, and yeah, they are looking for bugs. Uh, if you are experiencing bugs specifically in this version of Proton, they want to hear about it so they can squash it for the actual Proton 703 release. If you can experience these bugs in other version of Proton, don't don't report it or report it on the mainline Proton. Uh, but yeah, nothing super crazy here. Just a lot of like crash and performance fixes, maybe a couple new games. But yeah, I didn't really see anything that stood out like crazy. Pedro, did no, you see it? it is. Uh the ones, the obvious ones that stood out was like, oh, V Rising, you know, that game that everyone's talking about that I had a look at. It's like, oh, it's Valheim, but with vampires. Um, I haven't even started for. Valheim proper yet. So <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll wait. Uh, and I guess War, uh, no, not Warhammer, uh, Mech Warrior Online. That might be interesting. Oh. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> it is I free, mean, so yeah. we all want to go back. Uh, people of a certain age, I mean, for some reason, even me, and I didn't barely play it, was like we have Mech Warrior 2 like imprinted it, on yeah, our it, brains. The, like, I had that game on the Saturn. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it was one of those bucket list games because, like, yeah, if you had if you had the setup for it, man, you were you were living the high life. But. This is true. This is true. Uh, Daydreams. We got a couple of new games coming out this week. A couple of game updates we want to cover as well, but. Starting with everybody's favorite, uh, JRP is there a JRPG that I like? Uh, West of Loathing. Yes, <laughs> that's a that, that's that's a that is that is a JRPG that by 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 format that is a JRPG. Yeah, the the the, the way that it's presented, the combat, and everything. Yeah, that's a JRPG. <laughs> yep. Hmm. 
I, that I mean, technically bees are fish, so okay. Uh, uh, stick of truth, Correct. also yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, you you because you, you, did, you, did, you did like <laughs> fair enough. You did you you did like disguise a sense of humor, so that that's I also did. a joke. Ger- that's yeah. also a joke. Ger- yeah. So you that, know what? You got a good yeah, good yeah. sense of humor. I can probably at the I, end I of the day, it. a pizza is still a vegetable. Yeah. Shut up, ketchup. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, Daydream, it's a JRPG. Uh, if you like JRPGs, but don't like grinding, uh, this one is for you. Uh, they're saying it's uh, going to be about eight to ten hours, no unnecessary grinding. Hey, they got fully voice acted cutscenes, which is kind of nice. Uh, the game is the game. You can pick it up for about uh, it's a little pricey at twenty two seventy nine Canadian. It's on sale for 30% off now at 16 bucks. Uh, but yeah, if you're looking for something to really scratch that JRPG itch, Take a look at this, but um, yeah, I know that price tag is a little much. Yeah, and if you're looking at that and you're mildly curious, think about it. Uh, all, of all the RPG Maker games that you've played up to this point, did you like any of them? Because if you didn't, you're probably not going to like that. Pedro, imagine you're a kid back in the 90s. Wait. <laughs> I don't want to go to school. I already have to do math homework I, today. I really hated school. I really hated being a kid, especially one with, you know, my right hand looking as it did. Kids are mean. Kid in the 90s. So, oh, geez. So, oh, yeah. wait a minute. You mean this isn't Flower Mister? <laughs> <laughs> At worst kind of nostalgia. Not really, no. <laughs> the cocaine field nostalgia? I think that's the best kind. No of DLC, though. no IAP, no NFT, no BS. Uh, okay, you missed it. You should have had no WTF BBQ. Mm-hmm. Um, OMG BBQ, preferably. The whole game is yours for you to play. What does it require to run? I'm assuming we need a juggernaut of a system. <laughs> 1204, 64 bit processor, OpenGL, 2, two gigs of RAM, and yeah, uh, ooh, 256 meg video card. Whoa. What video card? <laughs> wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Can your NVIDIA Ion GPU run this game? Ooh. Uh, probably, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, there you Might go. Might have trouble on- hitting 60, but at 30, yeah, probably. If, okay, if you're, I don't you're stuck have on a- NVIDIA Ion and you need a JRPG. <laughs> Modern, like, GPU oh, or APU. Guy. Can you just, like, straight up uh, give it a functional number in the uh, UFI? Like, you have 256 megs to work with. Uh, For the APUs, yeah. Yeah. You can yep. set the memory. Uh, I remember doing it on my 2400G and setting it to... I think the minimum was 64 megabytes, so it would always hit uh, the system memory first because there were Unity games that would crash when they saw the difference uh, between what was allocated as GPU memory and what was system memory. That, that, That was a problem. Yeah, I was a little cheesed when this laptop's BIOS didn't let you adjust the uh, memory access for the APU. I was like, damn it! But, you know, it, 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 it is what it is. I guess I could just slime my troubles away. You could. Yeah, Hack and Slime. It's another game that's uh, coming out. This one's in early access, and it has a demo. Uh, oh. And it's got it's got one hell of a game description as well. Uh, it takes a very aggressive stance. Uh, but, you know, the pixel art looks pretty decent, um, and the game is pretty cheap now, too. What is, what is it? It's uh, 15% off at uh, $4. And, you know, there's a demo. So if you find out you like it, you can give them these guys five bucks. Um, but, you know, you can, you can, it's a side scroller, monster beat them up. You can grind. You can, I don't know, do, do whatever you want. This, uh, according to this game, uh, you can, uh, co complain on their Discord for, uh, having a, for being a, uh, zero budget game with very little content. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, for five bucks, might be worth a look. Five bucks. I mean, it's got 42 positive reviews, and I'm sure at least one of them were not products received for free. We look forward to you sending us the game, though. I look forward to playing it, actually, because I like uh, swingy action games. I, the it is art early access. Yeah. So, yeah, no, it is. They only came out in early access on June 1st. So, 42 uh, positive reviews already. That's very good. A little bit, you know, suspicious, but very good. But look at the price of it. Four ninety nine. Yeah, um, <laughs> there, well, there were there were quite a few product received for free though in the review section. I scrolled yeah. down and gave that uh, one. I like the pixel art. Probably doesn't require anything to run an NVIDIA or AMD graphics card. Five hundred and twelve oh, megabytes. Yeah. Ooh, right. yeah. <laughs> we we opened GL two boys. This is not roguelike. It's meta progression death research. <laughs> um. Yeah, I here's this thing. <laughs> How pretentious do you have to be to leave that unironic review? <laughs> Listen, man, Steam reviews are serious business. Like, <sighs> I guarantee you on each and every review, I, we get done. I can't speak for these two. I get done because you don't, you stay away. We get 
product in I'm like okay gotta play it do the thing i type my thing up and i immediately go see what other people thought i was like wonder everyone else am i right am i right <laughs> and i've noticed every single week there's always that one motherfucker that takes that shit posting that text review more seriously than i take in compiling a review for my segment on this show i'm like i mean it's like you're trying to I mean, I guess if you want to do like free writing examples and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I don't. <laughs> honestly, uh, I had my one bout with the Steam reviews where uh, the developer marked my review as being um, naughty, <laughs> which gave it far more attention than it would otherwise ever have gotten. Fair question, Pedro. <laughs> was it? Uh, there, <laughs> was, there, there were a lot of cuss words in there, yes. A lot of eight <laughs> equal equal Ds. Yeah, lots of ASCII boobs and lots yeah. of lots of ASCII dicks. Basically, just saying that the game was a fucking broken piece of shit. Mm. <laughs> Always holding back. Always holding back. So something we've talked about on this show multiple occasions is we made it a point. We're like, hey man, where's your video? Because we're looking at a game. You want to play a game? You want to see a video? You want to see this thing in action so I can judge and see if you've left a curse or no. Not really. I do do that, but here's the reason because. This next game really helped me prove my point on this. This is Rocket Sword. I don't know where I'm going with this, but immediately we're just taking a look at the screenshots. I'm like, ah, uh, that some just, chaos, yeah, yeah, just like a bunch of shit on the screen. It, I, I mean, it looks very low it. budget since we're on that particular train. Yep. <laughs> Gratuitous slash him up, uh, slice step. I'm like, I'm not. Don't think I'm interested in that. And I'm like, all right, let's see what the video. Oh fuck yes. Okay, hundred <laughs> percent. We're done. I'm getting a copy of this. Um, murder wiggle, man. <laughs> murder seriously, wiggle. that's hilarious. Look at that. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> you have a rocket powered sword where you kind of give it suggestions. Why it's blowing up aliens and shit that you can upgrade. Yes, done. I will be, um, yes. Videos I'm very interested in your product or service. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say to that. And coming soon, add it to your wish list, full controller support. And, um, now you need an i5, uh, 7300U. That's it. Can we get Elton John to play this? Rocket Man? No, we need Shatner. <laughs> Shat- <laughs> no, no, we- sword. <laughs> yeah. Sh- Shatner versus uh versus Elton John. We'll see who gets the best score. Mm. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. So a couple of game updates. And uh this is kind of first of its kind. I ran into this on Linux underscore gaming. I think Yanderman posted it. And of course, I just wanted to give it a mention because I I think we're going to see more of this. And I'm talking about Steam Deck Optimized. What Bioshock, Bioshock Remastered. Remastered. Yep. It saves Buzzer. 7 gigabytes of disk space, which is kind of neat. And I just like begun the deck shrinking. Absolutely has. Because if you suffer from small deck syndrome, SD card enhancements, not getting the job done, this mod might help. Now, it removes... Uh, how does it do this? It's going to take out unneeded language files, you know, like... Uh, and it's going to derp all your video down to 720p. Makes sense, right? You're thinking about it. As long as you do the re-encode and it's not, you know, terribly lossy, and they smash the hell out of the development commentary. Now, what do you two think? Oh, Pedro, you have a deck. And so here's what I'm thinking. Like, is it that big of a deal? Is the SD card that big of a barrier? Or is this just... Because I can't think of a situation where you just couldn't get... um, I think it's more for those people who bought the 256 gig version and don't have an SD card. Wait, it doesn't have a slot for an SD card? on. Yes, it has the slot. It's just that people don't have the actual SD card to put in the slot. Mm. So if you are one of those people, yeah, 256 gig, which is what I've upgraded mine now to. Yeah, that, that SSD, you put three games on it, modern day games, it's gone. Those 256 gigs are gone. Um... So, yeah, th- these, if that is your case and you're very space constrained, this would be very useful, not just for uh, Bioshock uh, Remastered, but for a lot of other games. Just optimize those um, assets for the deck 720p everything, like texture sizes, make them, I don't know, 128 by 128. You won't be able to see any higher than that anyway. So, uh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, it's, it's not a bad idea. I, Especially if you want to cram more games on your deck, uh, if you want to keep it on the SSD, like Ven said, or, you know, you just have a lot of games that you want to have available to you. You just 
you you want to be spoiled for choice when you're stuck in the bus. Seven or gigs. Airplane. It saves you seven gigs from the one yeah. game. Yeah, that's significant. <laughs> yeah, and and you know, like you said, you can apply it to other games. Um, Last yeah, in Shadow of War. <laughs> Star Citizen. Yeah. XCOM um, Two. <laughs> dude. Uh, yeah. A couple of things. I don't know about the legality of this. I think that's kind of in the air. But I do not. I mean, they're not, not distributing anything, right? They're just they're just they are. Yeah, all the <laughs> that is exactly what they're them. doing. Yeah. They're oh, redistributing just... game assets. No, you just <laughs> drag this shit oh. into the game directory and hit yep. Ah, <laughs> then yeah, then that's uh, that's a little dicey for sure. That I thought is it was a script to, but, I thought it was a script to no. re-encode the videos and uh, language files. Ah, not, a little bit, not even a little bit. So no, no, no. Do you think? Because uh, I mean, this is something that you know I personally would do if I had the time, and I thought it would be about you know, a value add and I could, you know, entice more people to buy games on the Steam Deck once and if the Steam Deck gets that just everyone has one as going back, uh, having a specialized, you know, because it's not that much work to downsample some things. Deck optimization, Pedro, do you think that's in the future for a, a game development? Because uh, we've, not we've for AAA games. <laughs> not we've for AAA games. No. <laughs> that we might see that from game development. Yeah, for third parties like modders, people in the community who are actually very much into the game, absolutely. From the actual developers slash publishers, not going to happen. Mm. Well, is that because they're too busy playing Super Mario Brothers and Gary's Mod? Yeah, it could be. <laughs> but uh, if you ever wanted to play as uh, Super Mario from Super Mario 64 uh, in Gary's Mod, well, now you can. Uh, see <laughs> Cosmic uh, on Twitter posted a video about well just that it's G64 it is a completely uh, well, implemented complete. Mario yeah it is just Mario from the uh, Mario 64 game as a playable character N not just a reskin on a source uh, character it is the actual physics all recreated in source that you can play in Gary's mod. And I'm sitting here thinking, is that, are you baiting Nintendo into a lawsuit? Is, is that what's happening here? How dare you, Bismarck? Well, Nintendo's a huge fan <laughs> of fan-made projects. They fully support the community in that picture. Yeah. How dare oh, you? oh, yeah. The, the, uh, the installation <laughs> instructions here. Number one, number one uh, you got you got to have a uh, Super Mario 64 ROM that you have legally acquired by some means. Uh, mm -hmm. And also, installation mentions a DLL, so either you're doing this in Wine under Linux, or you're going to be submitting some pull requests. Uh, the, yeah, they, they give you the checksum to use for the script to actually rip all that stuff out. Yeah, that's there, there, there's there, that's not a Linux friendly instruction. Someone's going to have to wait. <laughs> so you mean if I just take that and dump it in my Proton prefix that's automatically generated when I launch Gary's mod through Proton? Like I said, you're going to have to use it through Proton, otherwise. Yeah, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Is there any maybe? Gary's mod <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't. Or was. I, I think I think there is, right? Yeah. There was a native Linux version of uh, Gmod, yes. It always ran like shit because... Thanks, Gary. Okay, so, <laughs> all right, so I, either way, you run it in Proton. Hey, Point man. redacted. Get your Mario on. <laughs> yeah, coming up next, we're going to eat some mushrooms and see what kind of changes we undertake. Uh, but we also got to talk about GameScope. Oh, NVIDIA saw us all over the floor. Get it up. We have... You to thank you caused this. Yes, you. This it's is, all your, your fault. fault. At this <laughs> point, it is all your fault because it probably wouldn't have gone on long enough if it weren't for every single one of you watching us right now. I and don't then, know, man. Is there anybody there was, named Jacob in the audience? Uh, probably. They're uh, all and then, named Jacob, then. <laughs> all of them. Damn it. There's the occasional crazy ones that decide, you know what? Those guys, they could do with some funding. Like, Basil, you see Basil right there. He resubbed to us on Twitch for twenty nine months. Twenty nine solid Crazy months. Man. That's Bezo bucks, baby. Hey, he, he, he could he could spend that money on therapy, but instead he chose to spend it on us. <laughs> Might need and therapy it, because that's going to buy you access to our super 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 secret Discord. And uh, you yeah. can get access to that via subbing to us on Twitch too, baby. That's yeah. what I was saying. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, you can also <laughs> sub to yeah Patreon dot com slash Linux Gamecast. That's the thing you can go to. Uh, get access to the Discord, like Ven said. Uh, you can get access to the show notes. You can watch the show congeal as we find stories and add commentary and do all that good stuff. You get early access to videos that Ven puts out. There's no NetJack one coming down the pipe. That's out. You can go watch that in real YouTube land. Is there any new ones coming out? You got are you playing around with ribbon mics? 
I'm not a video making machine. I just aspire to be. Uh, I got a couple of, uh, what I'm doing right now. Here's the true, true behind the scenes for everyone is I'm still waiting on that thing that they sent me that didn't exist. And I had to send it back because that one didn't work. And I'm um, waiting. Non-existent for it get, and non-functional. Yeah. So I'm waiting. And the reason I'm doing that is because I got a demoed unit. That's how I managed to even get my hands on one. And I thought, I was like, ooh, no one's got one of these. And they offered to give me a brand new one at the price I paid for that. That's the only reason, Sweetwater, you're holding my dollars right now. <laughs> I, I, we're, we're at a month now of an interest-free loan. When are you going to start charging interest? <laughs> I, see, now i got to do that thing. Man. I eventually got to make that executive decision of, like, is it worth, like, the $70 thing? I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, what what else we we got you can uh, we got Trackmania stuff that happens on uh, Tuesdays and Fridays. If you're in Discord, you can join along. You can play it with Ven and others. That's always a good. That's an amazing rock and, and roll time. time. But not to be undersold, you got Thursdays where I saw you were playing um, 3D Faster and Light. More more Trigon, yeah. Try, trying and getting getting spanked, getting my bum bum spanked. How but, quickly did you die? Because I got wrecked to death when we first got the game. I, I played the demo, then you went ahead and bought it. Then I watched you stream for the first time. I'm like, yeah, Jordan died as quick as I did. All right. Oh, yeah, no. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I had what looked to be a good run until fucking Popo jammed a tailpipe or a potato up my tailpipe. And mm. uh, yeah, that, that didn't go too well. So if you want to see me be bad at various video games, quakes, cyberpunks, trigons, uh, watch watch Thursday streams. Um, we got stores, store.linuxgamecast.com. Cover yourself in Linux Gamecast merch. Advertise to the rest of the world that you watch this podcast, I guess. Yeah, people, people need to know. And if they, they don't know, they will. Uh, we got t-shirts, oh, look, we, we got get a, coffee books. We got books. flame. We got, whoa, so hot. Ooh, flame. So, such, such fire. We got Saucy. stickers. Flame. We got Damn hoodies. Flame. No fanny packs, no booty shorts. Maybe one day. Uh, but you can get a hoodie. You can get a sticker. It's Bo- good booty, stuff. booty shorts may be in the work because I had to do some. Um, I, I cracked open the uh, Inkscape today because ah. I had to make a new um, emoji for this ah. To piss straight off because he took issue with that. Uh-huh. Yeah, it took issue with the teeny tiny font at the bottom. Yep. <laughs> well, I reduced uh, the resolution on it the second ago. <laughs> control, control minus, minus, minus on your browsers, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but you could also put your browser to linuxgamecast.com, put your mouse over the support button, maybe buy some stuff off our wish list. I have one, Ven has one, Pedro has one, Jill has one. If you send us a little, little thank you note on uh, Amazon, we'll have to read it on the air. Uh by let let Pedro break into people's houses. That's <laughs> what he really wants to do, and you can pay for his crime spree. Yes, that too can be your fault. Why not? That is brilliant. We do want to thank each and every one of you for making this show possible. It's been a fun ride, and it's starting to get a little more interesting now that um, people are kicking or screaming are having to find out about this Linux thing. You know, that's the uh, thing I, I saw install on my a couple of people my Steam Deck. Yeah, yeah. I saw a couple of people uh, like moaning on Twitter because they had installed Windows 11 on their Steam Deck and shit wasn't working properly. Oh well. <laughs> Can, okay, I, I shed a tear for them. <laughs> Not to get back into a uh, deck swinging contest. <laughs> Think about it this way: Is there that type of person that is just like so scorched earth? I'm not going to learn anything but Windows, and. They're just not even going to try to run it with the appropriate operating system on their Steam yes. Deck. They're like Windows 11. Yes, they will have a worse GTFO. experience because they are just that anti something that they perceive well, to be bad. How do you fuck do you even navigate Windows and like Poor, poorly? <laughs> Listen, poorly. I, I, I don't. I don't spend a lot of time imagining how uh, the, the the mentally ill and insane <laughs> go through life. I, I I got enough problems as it is. Fair enough. Uh, Fair enough. Well, we, you know what? I got one less problem, though. I can run stuff in a window on Linux in Wayland. Yeah. So uh, Ooh. new NVIDIA drivers, 5154807 is out. It's the non-beta version of that one we talked about a couple weeks ago, but now with added user feedback. And the big one here is game scope HDMI performance. HDMI audio output. Oh, my um. God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can finally listen to shit over my crappy monitor speakers. No, but, uh, yeah. So uh, I tested out the new... Uh, NVIDIA drivers with GameScope uh, with the latest kit. And yeah, performance is so much better. Way, way improved from the Chug Fest from a couple weeks ago. Cyberpunk seems to be holding 45 with both FSR and NIS upscaling. Although FSR seemed a little bit more stable with my highly scientific test of aggroing <laughs> all the p- enemies in a room and running around like crazy while shit was blowing up and yeah. seeing where the frame drops were. 
Um, so, and then I, tr- I tried FSR in one direction and then I turned on NIS and I ran in the other direction and yeah, there Science. were, there were, there were slightly, see. yeah, there you go. That hundred percent my experimental methodology. Uh, there was a little more frame drops on NIS, but it's still pretty solid. Uh, yeah, very, very good. I look forward to dicking around with GameScope more now that it doesn't suck ass on NVIDIA. Yeah, this is the 515 version, which is the one that, you know, now has the option for the open source kernel modules. And you may remember last week when I said that I hope that the, this would remove the delay between the releases and the PPA availability, because I'm on KDE Neon and I'm using the graphics driver's PPA. It hasn't, so I'm still waiting on 515 over here in uh, Pascal land, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> I shed a tear for you. I, uh, hey man, I am still <laughs> doing um, backwards front flips because we can just like go to the release sources. That is strange, man. It's, like, <laughs> it's, it's CUDA only though. No, no gaming fun times. Don't fun fucking time. care. It's here. I mean, uh, and I'm not saying that to pump up anything. I'm just talking about it's still strange. I'm like, what? Because on the driver's page, it's like, oh yeah, go to the source. I'm like, what? This is so yeah. weird. It's yeah. kind of strange. <laughs> go go, go to GitHub from this NVIDIA site. Yeah. It's- all right. Uh, what else do we have? All right. NVIDIA sauce. That is what we're talking about because if you didn't know, the not any of the user space stuff, but all the kernel space stuff has been open sourced. NVIDIA, kind of, sort of, and there's a lot of confusion for this, but I want to give a big round of applause to Christian Scheller, who kind of walked through all the stuff that's been going on because, you know, a lot of work has to be done by all the sides to make this open source uh, food type stuff into something that's going to be usable. And that's going to take a couple of years to do it because there's a lot of things that, you know, you got to deal with Mesa, you got to deal with a uh, Nuvo and hell, Nuvo might even get the ability to reclock GPUs once this is all over and done with. As long as it's 20 series or later, man. But yeah, the out of tree source code kernel driver has been tested and basically really all it does right now is supports CUDA use cases because data centers and that's kind of what we said. Less shock, not, not even a little bit. And the binary drivers, you know what? They're going to stick around you know, for the legacy cards, the 10 series, you know, those ancient things from times past years ago. So what you should do is just run out and immediately buy a brand new NVIDIA card as soon as possible. That's how we're going to do things. And, you know, for the end user, this is going to mean eventually better out of the box experience. Just pop it in, it boots up. At least you're going to have some options without having to muddle around and like hoping new folk can get something up on the screen. But yeah, I read through this. I thought it was pretty decent. And uh, yeah, well done. Uh, my first thought was, after reading that opening paragraph, uh, which I understand, I mean, that's your employer. is like, this post brought to you by IBM. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Every, every time I read his blog name, I read it as Christian Fuck Schaller, but it's just, yeah. that, that's just the middle initials. But yeah, no, the uh, it's it's good to see that the Nuvo team is like taking the very long view of things. Uh, the promise of being able to run Nuvo and the NVIDIA blob drivers concurrently at the same time. It's that's going to be a weird one, isn't it? That's an yeah, interesting engineering challenge. Yeah, because you can you can already kind of do that with AMD right now and uh, Intel yep. as well. So um, yeah, having having that capability, being able to switch uh, drivers on the fly, very very nice to have. Um, but. You I got get, a question. You got, you got a question? Yeah, yeah, yes, Mr. Stone? So I don't think you can do that with AMD currently right now switching on the fly between the open source and the binary drivers, correct? Uh, in theory, you can. The yeah, actual dispatch and, and is so, uh, <laughs> functional. So, so, uh, f- so functionally speaking, you can actually run different versions of the uh, open source driver, which mm-hmm. is actually kind of neat. Uh, so, I mean, yes, maybe not with the NVIDIA or the AMD uh, blob driver currently, but maybe that's a potential feature with uh, the NVIDIA blob driver. Because that's what I'm getting at, if that is a feature, because that is something that's been a big pain in the ass on AMD's side is like, hey, I want to do something productive. I want to run, you know, Blender or DaVinci or making content I creation. I want the good OpenCL performance, so I yeah. want to use a proprietary driver. Something other than gaming. I also want to play games. Right, that's yeah. what I'm saying. So Business up front, party yes. in the back. <laughs> uh, that would... Kind of get that going because in a- AMD video cards have hair. That yeah, that's uh, vendor neutral dispatch is supposed to do that, but that mm, it's I also I'll, been spotty. <laughs> I also like the idea of having like shared firmware so that like having it in the same location for Nuvo and the Nvidia Blob to you know take advantage that's, of it. Yeah, yeah, it, it it opens up a lot of flexibility for the driver, and we're not we're not going to be seeing the the fruits of this in like one or two years time but in like five six oh man way down we, the line i mean yeah, yeah five five three ish you're gonna have something to fuck around with i think yeah 
yeah, I, I think I think by year five, this will be like very well integrated. And I say that based on fucking all developers. Oh yeah, no, listening that to is me a right. <laughs> number a I pulled. I reached real far right. up my butt, and I pulled it out. It sounded better than seven. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's where we're at. So, Indeed. Uh, all this is going to be in the show notes. Go ahead over to linksgamecast.com. Check it out there. But sometimes you want to wear fancy ass pants like this guy. Man, those are some fancy pants. Um, the shoes don't match them very well, though. What's that but camo yeah. for? Uh, Candyland. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, this is this is the uh, this is from Collabora. Uh, Moses, uh, the intern working on Monado, has had a very productive couple of months. Um, yeah, uh, going in not knowing a lot about image processing uh, and artificial intelligence, this chap has gone and implemented pretty. Decently functional hand tracking on the HTC or on the Valve Index using the external cameras, which they weren't actually supposed to be able to do originally. So that's also kind of neat. Um, but yeah, there's a um, there's a long blog post that goes into a very very detailed uh, description of what Moses did. But it's a lot of AI image processing shit way above my pay grade. Uh, what's kind of neat is they actually have a handedness detection sort of working. Uh, if you know you by uh, calculating the curve of your hand, but if you if you have uh, flat hands, then uh, it'll that detection will work super well. You but have you flat know, like, hands. What do you have, like fucking spatulas on your arms? Yeah, you know, if if, <laughs> if, 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 if you how if did you, you flip escape burgers, Jensen's kitchen? <laughs> listen, listen, you you had to you had to do some unspeakable things to the leather jacket. Don't don't ask. <laughs> it's not appropriate for Twitch. Uh but you know this this is really cool considering like it, we went from nothing to this pretty impressive and this is this is an intern too so jitterfingers i'm kind of excited about you know this you know getting all of the heavy stuff taken out of the way so we can start with the flip, reduction flip, flip off the headset come on do the it. smaller headset these <laughs> my worlds you know you want to do it or at least a kamehameha fuck yeah, yeah he's yeah. probably already done it <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, that it out is. of the system that was like it's, the first yeah. 40 minutes yeah but uh this is this once you know uh vr is accessible and by that i mean affordable uh, because Jordan was talking about uh, being above his pay grade, it's literally above my paycheck. This one, because uh, any half decent um, VR headset is the price of a Steam Deck. So yeah, no. <laughs> oh, for me, it's not even the price so much. Like if I was really, I mean, if you're gonna make that a hobby, like you're looking at like a grand, twelve hundred bucks. I've spent that much money on dumber things, uh, but. For me, it's all the kit. It's the wires. It's having a fucking toaster strapped to your fucking face. Uh, a dedicated I, I want, room. Right? <laughs> like, it's not even the room so much as having to set up the room, too, you know? Like, that is like, oh, this is my play space. And I feel bad for people that went through all that trouble with the lighthouses and all that, and they used it, like, three times. But <laughs> it was too much trouble to take any of that out. So that is, like, the dedicated empty room. The holodeck. Yeah. The hollow hole. The hollow shed. <laughs> Do you have any interest in when? When are you going to get VR, Jordan? I have. have a, I mean, I have a PSVR. Uh, we have it set up in the den. Are you going to get uh, PSVR too? Uh, I don't have a PS5, so probably not. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't there know. Child I, I, in I, the house. <laughs> that's true. Uh, yes, but there's also a kid. Yes. There, and and you know, I also live there as well. Right. Um, yes. So no, uh, I mean, I. I the index has been one of those things that I kind of wanted to pick up, but again, like Pedro said, it's a bit of the price. The I ha- I have the space now because you know I have a fucking house, but um, <laughs> that like I don't I don't think there's gonna be that much in the way of games I really want to play. Maybe Alex and Gorn and Super Hot, and that's kind of it. That's yeah. The only thing I feel like the only nano leader of uh, FOMO is Alex. Like yeah, I'd like to go through that experience, but I want to go through that experience for like ninety nine bucks. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the price well, of a triple A game in like ten years. <laughs> well, you could you could you could just play some Quake. Oh man. You could. Fuck Absolutely. But uh maybe you've been trying the like the newer uh modern port uh source ports of the Death Quake Mastered. engine. 
Yeah, and they haven't, you know, the performance hasn't been great, especially if you have an older system that you used to play Quake on, and it used to run a heck of a lot better, and now it does not. Well, uh, there's an engine out there, there's, well, there's a couple of engines now that are actively trying to uh, change that. Iron Whale is one of them. Uh, it's forked off of the Quake Spasm engine. Uh, I don't know how you fork all over a spasm, but there you go. Uh, they they have successfully done that, and they are on top of the added performance that Quake Spasm tries to do, which is basically, okay, you, the minimum requirements, they say, for Iron Whale here is an ATI 5450, an Intel HD 4200, that's the uh, Haswell ones, and the... Um, uh, the NVIDIA 420? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's all basically pre-Vulcan software, which when you actually look into the requirements for a lot of the more modern uh, source boards for Quake, uh, oh, yeah, they require OpenGL 3.1 compatibility, which also gives you OpenGL ES 3.1, a.k.a. Vulcan 1.0 uh, compliance. And, mm -hmm. So, yeah, the... Stuff like Iron Whale and Quake Spasm are very, very welcome, and uh, I will have to try this on the Triple uh, E PC and the uh, NB five fifty D when I have both, because that 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 seems exactly the kind of platform that this engine was made for. <laughs> yeah, the the interesting thing here, the the reasoning behind it is uh, a lot of the newer Quake maps that some people are doing are a bit too ambitious for some of these mm -hmm. older engines. So hence the need for this like performance, uh, performance focused, uh, optimized version that uh, sacrifices uh, compatibility and accuracy just for more performance. I don't know. It seems like a cool idea. If don't you're really break a die. Quaker space, don't <laughs> quake, don't break quake, quake breakers, Quaker space. I don't know. I mean, we were even talking about that a couple of weeks ago now. when we were looking at the, uh, what was it? Ray traced. Yeah, uh, the, yes. it was right. Ray Trace Doom. That's what it was. Doom. It was the, okay, all right. Yeah, it, it was going deeper. But yeah. I applaud this just because it's another ever so delightful example of just pure because I fucking can development. Like, why are you doing this? Because it can, man. Let's just see how fast we can make it run. Like, I respect this. And does it break things? Absolutely, it does. All right, let's go. But but it, but it go fast. You, you go rocket fast. jump. Go boom. fast, break things. Yep. Boom. <laughs> and you still get mod compatibility with this one, which is something you lost with Quake Spasm. Quake Spasm was like core performance. That was the thing. This one, you get a lot of goodies. And it's like compatible with the Steam mods. version, too. Yeah. So, I mean, you yep. don't really have to do, you know, anything crazy or special to get up and run. It'll knock the taste of Beth Mastered Quake right out of your mouth. Yeah, this is actually based on the original source. <laughs> there you go. It's not an artistic reinterpretation. Uh, yeah. The, uh, Night right. Dive, they tried. Well, they got it up and running. The, the, that's something. Ne it needs more RTX. <laughs> See, so. the, the Night Dive version of Quake, uh, the Beth Master version of Quake, is something that is so... It's close enough to... It's like I would imagine like that would be a pod person that would fucking eat me, but I wouldn't know until the last second, you know? <laughs> right, right. And, and, until they make like one mistake in the conversation right. that you're like, wait a and second. And it's all like, <laughs> right. Yeah. Wait, yeah. this whole time, about, really? Then they start running away I and I put my pants back on. And I'm like, that was, fine, that be like that. That wasn't Judge actually quick. Aliens. It was the Loch Ness Monster. And I said, I ain't giving you no tree fitting. <laughs> all right. Well, coming up next. It's time for your math test. And also, you forgot your pants. Oh, yeah. go up. Lock it's, the it's the Can't nightmare called the Cherquisition. Welcome back to the Cherquisition. It's time for some math homework. This week, we're taking a look at Sonority. Uh, it's developed by Hanging Gardens Interactive on the Unity Engine. You can pick it up for about 20 bucks. What is it? Sonority is an inter is an innovative music puzzle adventure set in a lovingly designed, fascinating world. Play as Esther and discover the rocky... Uh, rock, discover the rockery, <laughs> a place full of music and unique puzzle mechanics. We got to thank uh, Abs Application Systems Heidelberg for sending us some keys. This is the share acquisition. This is where we install a game on a bunch of different Linux distributions with some different hardware. Uh, to tell you what we think about it, test it, tell you if it runs and well, if it performs well, and give you our final musical chair score based on launchers. They're musical launchers. It's terrifying. Don't listen to them sing. You will die. Uh, so let's get into it. Pedro, what did you think of Sonority? Well, 
Uh, I was uh, surprised because, yes, the uh, publisher actually reached out to us. It's like, yeah, this other game, we sent you keys for it. That's, that's taking a while. So here's keys for a new one. So, hey, let, let's let's see what Sonority is all about. And uh, over here on the Horizon 7 3700X with the GTX 1080 and on the Steam Deck, it launches out of the box. It does not hold uh, 144, 25, 60 by 1440. It hovers somewhere in between 90 and 130. You can look at the, uh, the video version there on the steam deck it actually just holds the 40 that i have the refresh rate set to so that's that's very good uh the i you can play this with a controller you can play it on the steam deck absolutely but i wouldn't it it, it is uh the musical notes you can have them in either musical notation or you can have them in as numbers so i just went with numbers and this became a maths uh, game that <laughs> that is all it w- ever was uh and yeah for a game focused around sound so much um the background music seems kind of meh but maybe that is deliberate because the emphasis here should very much be on the notes and the sounds that you need to play yourself in order to progress fair enough but as for the fun Sonority is a puzzle game where the focus seems to be a story about talking animals and the healing properties of music. Fair enough. I didn't, you know, I don't play video games for the story all that much. In fact, uh, the more video games I play, the more I realize that I don't really care about the story at all. And if I do, I actively go looking for it. I don't like to be hit with it over the head. It's like, oh, I'm going to take control away from you and slap you in a cutscene. There's your story. No. That doesn't do it for me. But it, you still have the puzzles and the Metroidvania light exploration and backtracking. The puzzles are pretty good at introducing you at the type of maths that you need to do in order to progress. But just as I start to get, you know, the new, like the new note and what you need to do and everything that you need to do to progress, there's only one or two puzzles that make use of said new note and then you're done. Move along, the area is complete. It it feels like something is missing. A wasted opportunity. Maybe you could have some really clever head scratchers. Maybe a reference, since you're dealing with musical uh, notation, reference some popular songs. Just close enough that they would be recognized, but without having to worry about licensing. That's important. But uh, yeah, maybe if you have a child... This could be a very uh, interesting game for a young child who's getting into the world of music or video games. Two chairs. Yeah, yeah uh, on the Fedora 3564-bit with the R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti, it launches out of the box. It holds 60 at UHD and 1080p when you have the, the frame cap set. Uh, controls are, well, remember Ocarina of Time? The, the, the Ocarina part. Yeah, that, that that's it. That's that that's the game. Uh, also, some very slippery platform navigation where you can just kind of fall off the path and have to restart sometimes. That was, was kind of the most challenging thing. Is like a little bit for it, a little bit for it. Oh, I fell. Damn it. Um, yeah, uh, it's also very musical and 2D, as is the the game. Visually, though, it looks like one of those two th- early 2000s dirt cheap CGI drug to DVD movies you found at gas stations and grocery stores. I get, I get that most of the effort here got put into the actual gameplay and the um, the world design, but you know the animation. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little, it's a little uh, teeth clenchy, a little lock jaw, if you get my sense. Uh, Fun wise, <laughs> math puzzles, my favorite. I gotta admit though, on paper, it seems like a clever idea for a puzzle game. You know, manipulate platforms based on steps derived from musical notica- notation. In practice, though, it forces me to engage in that eleven grade eleven math test part of my brain that I've been trying to kill for years with drugs. And I got that you're supposed to play along with the stone troll heads to unlock the door, but randomly noodling on your fr- flute can brute force them in like thirty seconds or less. So I've never figured out what they were actually supposed to be. Apparently, you could just do along with them, and they'd be happy. Here's the rub, though. This seems aimed at young children, and I can see this actually helping kids learn under or kid helping kids to understand musical style, skills, help them with some basic math problems. But as an adult, it just feels too much like homework. So I'm gonna give it two chairs. I recognize what it's trying to do, but it just doesn't. It doesn't hit as a thirty-something-year-old man. Oh man. So check it out over here in Debian 11. Debian 11, that's a new one. Debian 11 on a 1920X with a 3060. Clean bill of health for the most part. What did 
support. Like to see that. Easy to stream, full screen, no problems there. Controller support. And it was detected after starting the game. I always test for that because there's nothing more annoying than having to wait and like, ah, oh, I got to shut all this down. But it doesn't lock the input for your dribble. So you can kind of get out of focus really quick. Might want to take a look at that. It can easily do 60 FPS at 2160 on high on my little 3060. And graphically, kind of to what Jordan said, I mean, it falls into, they genuinely tried their best category on this, which is not knocking on it because it was done with some love. Notes play when you bash buttons. I mean, it's a game about music. It better get that right. And for the most part, it does. But let's talk about the fun. Ocarina of Time, my friend. More like the Ocarina of Bullshit. So, I was thinking about this. Man, if you want to teach your kids, like, the foundations of reverse engineering, this is probably a good start, man. Because it took me an embarrassing long, like, 45 minutes to really grasp how the notes affected the blocks. Like, up until that point, I was, like, semi-brute forcing the puzzles. Fortunately... On top of that, I stumbled across the fact that you can kind of jump down from blocks sometimes. Got about an hour in somewhere in the Stone Temple Pilot area. Uh, you know, the one where you button mash on buttons one through four until the door opens, which Jordan will confirm. That is the way to get through that puzzle. And it works. I mean, it takes uh, uh, about 18 seconds and it eventually just opens up. And uh, yeah. I had four notes at that point. I wasn't really looking forward to getting a fifth note because there's only so many times you can move blocks around until it becomes kind of samey. So yeah, about an hour in, got some enjoyment-ish out of that, but it wasn't really challenging enough to keep my attention. Like, it's kind of slumped there after that 50 minutes. I'm looking at Pedro's video. He's a bit further on. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's kind of what I was up to. So... I do want to ask, what the hell is with the camera in this game? Because you can kind of move it a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. right? Find those secrets. This is what I'm saying, man. Uh, the 20 degrees of semi kind of rotate, that's annoying. It just is. Camera should move, not move. Two settings we got right there. Unless there's some like critical issue to prevent me from looking around. I mean, I could see a static camera working just as well. Also, I got to bring up, this is priced at 1.13 Hollow Knights. That's a wee expensive for what it is. I'm not saying it's not worth it. I'm just saying comparatively, it's up there at $19.99. Uh, now, you could just look at this as like an educational game. And then, can you really put a price on a child's education? Nay, you cannot. So, yeah. If it's a kid's game, you know for kids, go for it. As long as the horror raccoon doesn't give them fuck mothering nightmares. Because that, that thing's a piece of work. Two cheers. Well, you, you don't like it when it talks and its mouth doesn't move? Uh, <laughs> like a freaking Willem Dafoe Lars von Trier movie Chaos well you know reigns. what like 45 seconds into that nonsense I'm like it's a psychic raccoon but then the mouth moves sometimes it's like what what are we going yeah. for here man yeah no the, the the speech and thought of the raccoon were very much at the same volume <laughs> yeah Chaos, uh, chaos reigns. The yeah, the, the right. I mean, again, the voice acting was completely serviceable. I don't have any issues whatsoever with it. And yeah, maybe a kids game. Maybe a kids yeah. game is the way that I could do it. Uh, there is a deluxe bundle that comes with stuff and it a music comes bundle, with soundtrack, and I think that's it. <laughs> but you can make your own soundtrack in the game with the with the piano, right? Pedro, you the can. soundtrack for this is only a buck ninety nine. All right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Reasonably priced. So, yeah, we do like a good puzzle game, and I didn't mind it as a puzzle game. I was, when it clicked, we talked about this more in the pre-pre-super shows, but it took me like 45 minutes. Up until then, you know, I kind of understood. I understood what the mechanics were, but I didn't understand that the blocks would go up or down depending on how far up the scale they were. Yeah, yeah far it's, from one note to the other. Right. It's like, okay. Yeah, and yeah. the game yeah, does go, go, not go, 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 go out of its way at any point to explain it fuck yeah. to you about that, Go, that going is, from c to e and e to d and so right. on and that, yeah and, and yeah, sometimes yeah. you need to stage at a lower lower in the scale then come back up yeah. and yeah, yeah once i got you're, that you're you're, lim you're limited by the highest note you can mm -hmm. go to and the lowest note you can go to so you gotta yep. like it occupy them and then yeah, different instruments you see me catch the uh, kalimba at the end of the video it's already cycled through once um but yeah the the kalimba for example doesn't have note one but it, ha it goes up to note six with only the five oh. that you've already unlocked. So yeah, different instruments have different limitations on the notes that you can use. And so yeah, some, yes. some of the puzzles have like notes already defined. So you have to mm -hmm. figure it out as well. It, like I said, on paper, it seems like a good idea. It's just in practice, there's a little bit too much math involved. 
I, I mean, it, I don't it, mind it. it. I yeah. think <laughs> I might have liked it better when I was just what I thought I was hacking the system, so to speak. But once, the, like, soon as I got the mechanic, I'm like, then it became work. Yes. Like, uh, like I, 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 I didn't know what the reward was, but. But yeah, yeah, no, the camera is a gimmick. <laughs> you can barely turn it. And uh, <laughs> really? Was that like, really necessary? Really? Why? <laughs> let, me, let me spin around. Not like yeah. start to spin and it's stop. It's like, I want to, let me look around. This is 3D. You rendered the whole thing in 3D anyway. Let me just Everybody's spin thing. first experience with that camera is they go to turn and like, oh, what's wrong with the camera? Mm-hmm. That 100% <laughs> user feedback on that. I'm like, well, why is it not? Is something wrong with my joypad? Oh, no. Yeah. This is how it is. Well, that's how it be. All right. Well, coming up next, we discuss why you want to have Discord, Jitsi, and uh, and uh, what was the last one? Skype. Yeah, having right. them all running at the same time for one person. It's what's for right. dinner. I don't know. Someone in Discord just posted the original Spice Girls and teeny tiny little uh, stamp JPEG, and I was trying to like equate the three of us with like the three original Spice Girls as uh, implied in that picture. So, uh, who is sugar? Who is spice? And who is everything nice? Well, uh, obviously, <laughs> Ven is the Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohayim. <laughs> <laughs> Come here and put your dick in this box. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sounds like a plan. I'm down. <laughs> Well, there you go. Uh, if you disagree, and please do disagree, uh, go to linuxgamecast.com and hit the contact button. There's a form you got to fill. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, LGC Weekly is the show that you want to send your hate mail to. Uh, there's some caveats at the top if you'd like us to have a look at your game. If you think your game is, you know, yeetable enough for LGC, then absolutely send us three keys. That That's all we ask. Basically. That many. Yeah. I, yes, I, I, three I, keys. I, I, I know counting is hard, but three of them. Can I do three? Yeah, three. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Zubin, talking about that Nedjack video I made, a couple of people watched it and uh, got some feedback from Synthetic Owl. They got questions. Maybe Ven got answers. Uh, in the Nedjack video, you don't explain why you need Zoom, Skype, and Jetsy. Going by the icon shown, is it Jordan? Does he yeah. force you to accept audio over Skype in his video via Zoom? Yes, 100%. Absolutely. Jordan is a corporate <laughs> Zoom whore. Can't get enough Zooming. I'm, I, a, the zoom the truth the is, I'm actually that kid from the Mazda commercials. Zoom, <laughs> zoom, zoom, zoom. All grown up. <laughs> All grown up. Look at me now, Mom. Look at me now. <laughs> uh, as much as I would love that to be the case, Unfortunately, it's not. No, I included all the WebRTC clients, so people watching that would go, oh, right, you can use any combination of WebRTC clients. We're not limited to using Zoom or Jitsi or Skype. We can, in fact, have people on different services running through the system here at the same time without any problem. What is it, Pedro? Hmm? You're making faces, son. <laughs> yes, I, I was uh, smirking at the Mazda Zoom Zoom that's going on in chat right now don't That's feed it. them <laughs> don't react to them <laughs> so yeah there's that uh but also yes jordan only runs skype zoom yeah i, I run i run them both in snaps it's all right sick in the head now last week pedro we were talking about a game called elite dangerous weren't we we were Ball talking about the actual uh racing re-implementation of the elite dangerous physics and ship Fly driving dangerous. thing. Yeah. Fly dangerous. Elite hazardous. Uh, and sure. Uh, and the, uh, apparently low spec Linux laptop, uh, is playing Strider's part in this, uh, equations because, uh, saying elite dangerous works for me. Just click install that and had to go to website outside of steam to input keys to game. I had to figure that out on my own at first. I thought it wasn't working. Yeah. See, I did that and did it that wouldn't too. work. And yeah, I so I actually sent their support an email because that's what they say to do. I did back and forth for an entire month and they couldn't make it work. So yeah, no, that shit's busted. Did yeah. you install Windows like they told you to? No. <laughs> they actually they actually did ask if I was using mine, and I did say yes, and then I stopped getting replies. Um, <laughs> that was, but that was right after they got uh, added on the uh, on the Proton whitelist too. So I was just like, maybe, maybe I stand a chance. No. 
Uh, Did you ever um, like submit a like Proton issue? Uh, there, it's already I, been submitted. If you go yep. to the uh, Proton GitHub, there's a not a significant number of people who actually say, "Yeah, I downloaded the game, I created the account, but it's not linking, and I can't actually start the game." So yeah, it's a known it, issue. It, it, <laughs> it, it's something between uh, it's something between Robert Space Industry, their account service, mm-hmm. and Steam that is just not working. Yeah. It, for, there's from something what I that doesn't you, let the accounts yeah. gel, and if they don't. Yeah, it, if you, if you can get can't through that, it. apparently the game runs like perfectly fine. But yeah, it's 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 the authentication issue. So if the, I'm just sitting uh, back playing with like statistics here, uh, it probably functions on either Debian or Arch. Uh, n- Darch. Don't know. Uh, but I know for the, a fact that doesn't. Debian? Well, maybe just Arch because I get Fedora as a sample and um, basically Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But yeah, the people that said that they got it working were people that already had the accounts linked because they used to play the game on Windows and then on Linux, they just hit play, sign in with their account, boom, that's done. But if you're creating a new account from a fresh new copy of the game that you've just bought, it doesn't work. Do it work. They don't, they don't, yeah. they don't have a lead interest <laughs> on Mac. I'm sorry, I can't do it. Oh, man. <laughs> so, yeah, we love hearing from you. Send us an email, leave us a comment on the YouTube video or the Odyssey video thing or library, whatever that thing is called. Somebody told me, but, oh, you know what? You don't have to self-censor on library. I'm like, yeah, I don't self-censor shit. I thought it was the, cause I, you know what the shit is in that Jack. Mm-hmm. And I oh, spelled yeah. it with a bleep. <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> what the poopy? Yeah. There's what, a reason the they keep the bleeps in South Park. There's a comedy <laughs> to it. There is. All right. We're going to get out of here. But before we do that, let me cue up some music. There we go. All right. So if you want to get in touch with me, I'm on the Twitters, doing the Twitter thing, social media. That's where I hang out. We used to do the Google+, Plus, but that's been a long time ago. you got to let it go. But if you're into the federated timeline type stuff, mast.linuxemcast.com, that's right. I'm over there posting things as well. I'm Jordan. If you want to hear me whisper set, uh, centrally in your ear, zoom, zoom. You can get some of that on Twitter at the Burning Fool or twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. What he master. doesn't mention is that he also manages the LGC OnlyFans. Good luck finding it. If you want to find me, though, that's uh, it's much easier to find. It's just at an account at 4FOUR on Twitter. You keep Twitter. messing it up, dude. It's only pans. <laughs> I thought it was only dance. <laughs> only hands? <laughs> only steamed hams. Steamed oh, hands. Okay, right. No, it's the children who are wrong. I, I'm not entirely sure where I was going with that. Aurora Borealis, that's where. <laughs> We're going to roll some credits. You mean the ship? <laughs> Here come the credits. No, the Northern Lights. I mean, you know what? I, I have a little baby hand. Maybe maybe I can, maybe I can do something. <laughs> oh, well, it's that time of the episode again where we got to thank our lovely, lovely Patreons, our advisors, Omegas, our Theron, our executive producers. They are Alias, Bob Rams, Scott Michaud, Mike Tomacast. G, Empty Drummer 7. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Mike said it was a great show. Rohit That's said it was good. five dudes. Yeah. I only counted uh, seven. We got to thank uh, Chicago and Abstraction, Nixon Spearman, <laughs> RC Monsters, Jack B, Renault Le Pet, Ryder X Machina, Paul Verduda, Justin Fosclaus, Ryder, Hakim, and Nubin. And the Death Notes, Nova Basil Chad, Romeo Marson, System T, Craig H, oh, Renee Leonardo de Crevy Kim, so hard G, Chris, Stephen brain. Jill, Benjamin, Ooh. Doom to the Wad, Stephen B, 30 Dean, Beck, uh, Game Motron, Dodger, Xanthorus Gaming, Mr. Hamas, Daniel Vasco, Nubbin, no, I, I gotta move you, Martin Nubbin, Nick, um, Kydra. He's already moved. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you got d- d- double Nubbin, Dubbin the Nubbin. Oh, the Horatio, a large mammal. <laughs> Think of the fine upstanding cannibals <laughs> helping build our little Linux powered studio with Carl, Mike, <laughs> Arthur, and Linux new Aldius, Noctilus, John, Eshemp, and Game Motron. Thank you very much. Yeah. Without you, it would still be possible, but it would take a fuck long, a lot longer. So. <laughs> no compelling. <laughs> Thank you. No compelling. All the compelling, ladies and gentlemen. Till next compelling. week. Die of fire. Make your serious face, Mr. Oh, you want to have like a. Yeah, uh, fine. You, no. Shows oh, I'm wearing a t shirt. Five dudes.